Good morning, everyone. This is Linda Sue with Linda Sue Plants for you. Today I'm going to attempt something that I'm not sure if I'm going to have success or not, but it needs to be done. So um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, as you can see, in front of you, we have a burro's tail and a donkey tail. Now, I have often wondered what the difference is between the two and now that I have them close next to me one of each type um, I did re do some research on these plants and <clears throat> there were several sites uh, when I googled it that did say these are one and the same but there were several other sites that said no in fact they are two different types so Burrow's tail is, um, and I wrote this down so I'd have the information here. Um, and this is according to uh, HTGT, Home Container Gardening. That's where I got this information. So if you want to look it up for yourself, you are able to do that. Um, the donkey's tail is also called the sedum. Morganium or Morganium, I'm not quite sure if that's a soft or hard G, but it's Sedum, S-E-D-U-M, Morganium, M-O-R-G-A-N-I-U-M. That's the pointier version. That would be this one. <coughs> Hopefully you can, you'll be able to see the difference here on camera. And that is the donkey's tail. The burro's tail is called the sedum burrito. And that has more plump, slightly more rounded leaves. And when you see them together, I think you can kind of see the difference between the two. Hopefully you can see these. Um, Pull them back a little bit. <clears throat> but that is the difference between the two. They are both um, natives of Mexico. And that's really all the information that I have on them. They're <clears throat> these kind of plants, these are succulents. So if you're familiar with succulents, they're not much different than any other type of succulent in the watering aspect of it. They, they hold the water in their leaves. Um, so... You don't want to be watering these, you know, every other day. You want to give it a good soaking and then allow them to, to dry out. But, of course, whenever we say allow them to dry out, I have to qualify that with not too dry because you can go too far in the other direction, too, and you'll get the same result, the shriveling leaves. And, um, and by the way, I have heard it said that when the leaves are shriveling on this, it's always, it's, it's definitely... From underwater and that's not true if you overwater either one of these and you ruin the roots so that they can't drink up water but you don't realize that you did that um, it that too can cause overwatering as just as underwatering um, and I think I turned that around there and I apologize but the underwatering can also ca cause the shriveling and drying up of the leaves as well as the overwatering so Make sure that if you're having that issue, you you check your soil and check your, um, you know, if you keep a schedule, a watering schedule, I know some people do, I don't, I just go by feel, um, <clears throat> but they do like to dry out in between waterings, not to the point where they do this. This is, these were, this is definitely <clears throat> from not enough water. And I know that because I'm the one that planted this. And it was a piece that had fallen off and I took too long to get it in the soil. And it um, it didn't get enough water up into these. But part of the root on that piece had to be okay because I did end up getting new shoots at the very top. If you can see that up here. And also at the bottom, at the base of this stem. So I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Um, these are plants that I'm starting for my girls. Uh, they're going to have to fight over who gets what, I guess, but um, I may end up with even a third pot when I'm done repotting this because it does lose 
the, the leaves very, very easily. They fall off. Sometimes if I'm just like walking by it, it seems, or looking at it wrong. So we're, we're going to put this, this needs to go in a bigger pot. It's, it's very, very tight in here. And I want to get it out of there and put it into this pot, which is a, just a little bigger. Well, it's quite a bit bigger, but you don't want to go too big, right? Because that's not good. Now, in this pot, I did notice I have what I think are two different, are both types. Because I've got some greener, rounder-leaved ones. And then I've got the pointier, um, the pointier ones here with the more the more blue, blue color. So it's possible that I've got both kinds in this pot, and that's the way it came, and that's okay too. Um, it's not gonna hurt anything for sure, and it'll probably make it kind of interesting. So that's all I know about that, folks. I'm not an expert on it, but I wanted to give you a little information because I know. There's, I've heard many times I've heard people say, I don't know if it's a burrow's tail or donkey's tail. So I thought I would take the time to look that up and see if I could get that answer for you. And that's what I found. And there wasn't a whole lot of information on the comparison of these two. If I would have looked them up individually, I might have gotten a different result. I'm already running into trouble here. I'm trying to get these off of here, and the uh, plant around this one is so tightly wound around there that I don't, I can't even get that off. And that's really why I'm doing this today, because um, I didn't want to wait until it got any more compact in here before. Before I did it, oh, this is gonna be something. There, I can. They're already falling off. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I may have to just. I may have to cut that. Oh, there. Some of those hooks come off from front to back and some from back to front and I think I was just doing it in the wrong direction. <coughs> I do think um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose quite a bit of this in this process but like I said it does need to be done so better now than later when it's even more full and more dense in, in the pot here. Okay, two down, one to go. <laughs> in this pot. <clears throat> and the plants themselves, um, they're very tight. They're very, you know, they're, they're going in a certain direction and they don't want to move. They're being very stubborn. Well, and I think that's donkeys and burrows are stubborn by nature, so. Okay. Whew. Oh, look at that. I don't think you can see that, but that was hooked on a root. So, that's why it didn't want to come out. All right, we got that out in one piece. Thank goodness. Now, for the most challenging. And as I said, I, I knew going into this I was going <coughs> to lose a few. But... It's got to be done, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to start with my clean pot. And it has the bottom piece that does twist off and come off. 
in the event I were to ever overwater and need to make a drastic um, save, I can do that. I don't I don't usually overwater though, I tend to underwater to a fault, so all right, we've got my soil mixture, it's just my normal mix, which is uh, soil, perlite, a little bit of orchid bark, and um, I think I have a little worm castings in here, but I am going to add some. And to this, I'm also, and I'm also going to add sand because I seem to have better luck with my succulents when I do add sand to them. And it's I guess it stands to reason since their native area that they grow in is very high in sand. You know, they've got a lot of sand, so probably add a little more of that later. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I need a drum roll. Ooh. I'm trying to eyeball because once I get it down in there, it's that's where it's got to stay. Right now, I'm just squeezing the pot. I'm trying to loosen it up in case the roots are really tight in there. Hopefully, they're not hanging on to the bottom of the pot. Okay, that's the best I'm going to do with that. I'm going to take my butter knife and I'm going to try and get along the edge a little bit. Oh, now that's interesting. I'm not running into anything here. Okay, that's very interesting. There appears to be... <laughs> Let me see on this side what we got going on. Um, I'm really at a loss here right now, plant friends. There appears to be about a quarter to a half an inch around the root ball, between the root ball and the, the pot. So I wonder if this was repotted recently before I got it. Oh, here it comes. Oh, good. Oh, come on. Oh, wouldn't you know, I had to get hung up on one. <laughs> there it goes. Yep, the roots are coming down the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. But I'm going to, I'm not going to disrupt any of that because I don't want to lose the plant. I'm going to put this right in the soil. Oh. I'm losing a lot. There we go. It's in. Push her down in there a little bit. Really, that wasn't bad, was it? Okay. Well, it's hard to believe we got that done that easily. I'm, I'm really sh very surprised, but very grateful. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm going to get dirt around it on this side because every time I try to move these, they break. But, we got to try. So, find my scooper. There it is. I'm going to take the pot that it was in. I'm going to mix a little bit of soil. 
Then I'm going to add a little bit of earthworm casting. Not a lot, but... And I'm going to add some sand. And again... Okay. I probably could have done that in front so you could see what I'm doing, but this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to mix this up. Alright, that looks pretty good. And that's what the final mixture looks like. Now, i got to get it under these branches somehow, and that's not going to be easy, but... It's got to be done. See, I'm going to need a lot more soil. But that's okay. We have plenty. I try to keep well stocked on my supplies, especially in the winter, because you just never know when you're going to come across something and, and you need to get it done, and then you don't have the supplies to do it, and that's pretty frustrating. you will know or remember that I just bought this not too long ago I honestly I don't think I've had it a month maybe I got it at um, Stein's Garden Center in Wisconsin it was the only one they had and I paid $16.99, which I thought was a phenomenal price for this plant. I've never even seen one of these available in the FF store, and that's not to say they've never been, but I've never seen one. I go there all the time. So. Adding a little more, a little more worm castings at the bottom, and a little more sand. Hopefully that'll do it. Okay. If any of you out if any of you out there have ever repotted this kind of plant. I'd love to hear how you did it. And I'd love to know if you had, you know, success or maybe you could give our viewers um, some pointers on how to do it, how to make it easier to do. I know I have seen some that uh, they take a towel and kind of roll it up or twist it up and they they put it underneath the underneath like right here under the plant and then they lift it up and I thought about that but I'm really a hands-on kind of girl and I really wanted to be able to feel what I was doing now I've got a little dilemma here because this appears to be in here crooked and this root ball is really sticking up high. And I don't see any way to get it down where it needs to go. Mm. That's okay. I'm just going to build the dirt up around it because I, I feel like I'm pulling roots off of there when I push on it. So 
I don't want to do that. And another thing too is I'm quite sure in the next day or two or week or so, I'm going to see more fallout from the repotting. Maybe they won't fall off, but I'll probably have some yellowing or shriveling uh, just because I can feel that you know, probably did some damage that I, is not apparent right at the moment, but the outcome of that will be down the road. But I won't worry about it. There's plenty enough plant here that even if I lose a little of it, it's not the end of the world. I'd love to get some dirt down in here, but I, these are so stiff. Right here, I can't lift that up without breaking them. They're just... Ooh. I can feel them falling off. Mm. Pulling, that's what's going on. As I'm putting the dirt in, I'm lifting up on the plant and it's lifting that whole root ball out of the pot. That's not good. This will work. I'm trying to push it over with my fingers to get it down in that. There's a little bit of a void between the rip ball and the pot. Oh, there it goes. Okay, now I got it down in there. Okay. We're good. Now, normally I would give this a little bit of water, but I'm not going to do that today because I just watered this plant yesterday. And the ripple is, is still very, very damp. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, overwater this poor guy. Oh, I'm glad I'm done with that. This reminds me of my um, Pylea peperomoides. Those of you that watched me do that one, that, that had a lot of the same issues. It's a different plant entirely, but um, the stems of the plant are very, I don't know if you would call it stiff or brittle, or but they snap off real easy, and it was really difficult to get that one repotted. And that plant didn't like to be repotted. It went into a little bit of a shock, um, only for a few days, and then it perked up. But uh, that's probably the fourth time I've repotted that plant. 
and honestly it doesn't matter what time of year you do it it just it it does not like to be repotted doesn't like its roots disturbed so um that one when that has to be repotted again and i think it's going to be in the very near future i will um video that for you as well and you can see my successes and my failures and hopefully learn from my mistakes and all right folks i think that'll be it for today i think this is done it's and again we've got the uh the names in case you didn't catch it at the beginning i i the research that i did um tells me that the donkey's tail the pointy pointy version is a sedum morganium and the burrow's tail is a sedum burrito they have the more rounded leaves so and they also do flower at the very tips um, they do send out different, either red, yellow, and white, I think, are the colors. Um, and then going forward, I'm going to hang this in my so south window. Um, it'll be fine right now. I'm not sure about the summertime because I don't, even though it says on the, you know, in, in when I Googled it, it did say direct sun, or bright sun. When you got sun coming through a window, it, that magnifies it. So that bright sun outside is not going to be the same. I'm sorry, that direct sunshine outside is not going to be direct the same as the direct sunshine in your house. If you've got it in front of a window, that window magnify, magnifies that intensity of the heat and the rays. So unless you have uh, the special windows that they make now where they... Uh, have stuff in the glass to prevent that from happening but if you're like me and you just have regular windows then yeah the, um, that sun can get very very hot and bright even in the winter but I've had her now in my south window since I got her and she seems to be fine um, that is that today, yesterday is only the second time that I watered her and I probably won't water her again for a good month I'm thinking as long as her leaves are plump and she doesn't look, you know, she doesn't look sick at all. I, I think I need to just leave her alone with the watering. And that's kind of been my motto anyway. Well, those of you that know me know that I'm, I underwater to a fault because if you underwater a plant, most, most of the time you, you can bring it back. But if you overwater a plant, by the time you see the damage in the, in the outgrowth, it's usually too late. Sometimes you can save it. Um, sometimes you can get the rotting roots off and there might be a few good ones left. I have done that, but I, I just feel like, for me, I would rather err on the side of it's too dry than too wet. So that's it. <clears throat> so I'm going to put my hooks back in here and get this back in the window and I will show that to you uh, in a moment. All right, she's back up in my southern window. Uh, I'm trying to get a really good picture of her, but the backlighting is horrible here because we've got a lot of snow we got last night and this morning. Finally tapering off. Actually, it was snow and ice. But <clears throat> there she is. And then I've got my twisted lipstick, and she's got, I don't know, you can see that, but she's got a number of flowers and a few more coming. And my Cebu Blue is doing great. And the other one I have in this window is my goldfish. And this is a, like I said, a southern window. It's one that I am going to be redoing in the spring. I'm not liking the way it's looking right now, but 
that's okay. We'll get it done. Okay, so there it is, folks, the finished product. I hope that was helpful for you, and I hope you all have a great Saturday and a great weekend. And we will be back with a new video possibly later today or tomorrow. I've got many of them planned. So thank you again for joining me. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, um, hit the subscribe button and that would be helpful. Okay. Have a great day. Bye now.